Welcome to ENT Mastery Course 2.0 in association with MedX and WorldENTCare.com. I'm Dr. Shyam Kalyan and we are going to talk about tracheostomy tubes today. Tracheostomy tubes is a sub question in the main question of tracheostomy and this usually carries about five to six marks. Before you know the different types of tracheostomy tubes, it is important you know the parts of a tracheostomy tube. So let's go into the parts of a tracheostomy tube. A tracheostomy tube has the following parts a tube shaft, a cuff, obturator, neck flanges, subglottic suctioning, and accessories. The tube shaft is arc shaped. It can be either single cannula or dual cannula. When there is a dual cannula, it will have an inner and an outer cannula. It can be cuffed or cuffless. Whenever a cuff is there, it provides an airtight seal. Obturator is for the ease of insertion. It provides some rigidity during insertion. Neck flanges are for stabilizing its position. It can be fixed or adjustable. Subglottic suctioning is present in certain tubes to help suction out secretions. Now, a tracheostomy tube will have various accessories. You can have a decannulation cap. You can have speaking valves and heat moisture exchangers. So the types of tube that we are going to discuss are cuffed tubes, uncuffed or cuffless tubes, fenestrated tubes, longer length tubes, metal tubes. Go again. The tubes that we are going to discuss are Cuffed tubes, cuffless tubes, fenestrated tubes, longer length tubes, and metal tubes. So, moving on to cuffed tubes. When the cuff is inflated, it provides an airtight seal. It allows for positive pressure ventilation and it prevents aspiration. When you deflate the cuff, it allows for speaking using a speaking valve or you can block the outer opening of the tube with finger and expirate and phonate. You should inflate the cuff just enough to allow minimal air leak. Check the cuff pressure twice daily. You should always prefer a high volume, low pressure tube. Now here you can see pictures of cuffed tube. The first one is a cuffed tube with disposable inner cannula. This is a disposable inner cannula. The second one is a cuffed tube with a reusable inner cannula. Along with the inner cannula, you can see that this is the obturator, this is a neck flange, and this is the shaft of the tracheostomy tube. Of course, this is a cuff. It's where you attach the syringe to check for the leak. Cuffless tubes. Indications of cuffless tubes are they are used in those who have adequate cough reflex. They can manage their own secretions. They can manage their own airway. Those who have tracheal problems are no problem in the upper airway. And in those who will get decannulated soon. So you use cufflet tubes, cuffless tubes in those who have adequate cough reflex, those who can manage their own secretions, those who have their own airway management, those who have tracheal problems and not upper, and in those who will get decannulated soon. So in a cuffless tube, the patients may be able to speak without a speaking valve. They won't have any trouble in swallowing. Next, we have fenestrated tubes. Fenestrated tubes are considered in patients who are undergoing weaning from ventilation. The advantages offered by fenestrated tubes are they facilitate speech, they reduce the work of breathing compared to non-fenestrated tubes. They facilitate speech and they reduce the work of breathing compared to non-fenestrated tubes. But however, they have certain disadvantages. There is a high chance of granulation formation near the site of fenestration. There is a high risk of aspiration and there is difficulty in ventilation. When there is a difficulty in ventilation, you should try using a fenestrated tube with a solid inner cannula. So with a fenestrated tube, especially the one given by Portex company, there are two types of inner cannula provided. 
there is a red fenestrated inner cannula and a white solid inner cannula. You must always remember that fenestrated tracheostomy tubes are not for newly formed stomas because even with a solid cannula, there is a risk of surgical emphysema. Here you can see two pictures. The first one is a port portex fenestrated cuffed tube with inner cannula. These are the fenestrations on the tracheostomy tube. Here you see the cuff. This is the red fenestrated inner cannula and this is the white solid inner cannula. On the right side you see a fenestrated cuffless tube. There is a fenestra in the tube as well as the inner cannula but there is no cuff. Next we move on to longer length tubes. The longer length tubes can be fixed or adjustable. When we look at fixed tubes, they can be proximally longer or distally longer. Proximally longer means there is adequate length or more length between the stoma and the trachea. This is used in deep set tracheas like in an obese patient, those who have neck mass or coita. Distally longer in which the longer part is inside the trachea. These are used in cases of tracheomalacia or tracheal stenosis. Now you have another type of longer length tubes with an adjustable neck flange. There is a flexible reinforced tracheostomy tube with an adjustable neck flange where you can position it according to the length of the patient's trachea or the patient's anatomy and pathology and you can lock it. But this is not for long term. It is difficult for use in long term. Can adjust the proximal and distal length as per the patient's pathology or anatomy. Here you can see a flexible reinforced tube with adjustable flanges. If you press this area, the gray area, the flange can be adjusted up and down. Here you see the reinforcement on the flexible tube. This is also a flexible adjustable flange tube which can you can adjust the length here. So you can Go to the turn the blue knob and adjust the length of the tube in a proximal and distal way. We have metal tubes also, but they are not that frequently used now. Old patients who bought such a tube long back may be continuing to use it because they are comfortable with that. The disadvantages, however, are when you travel in a flight, you might have to undergo special security checks in the airport. And they are not MRI compatible. So there are two types of metal tubes. You must have seen them already. Jackson's metal tracheostomy tube and Fuller's bivalve tracheostomy tube. Here we come to an end of our topic. So we discussed about the types of tracheostomy tubes. We discussed about cuffed tubes, uncuffed tubes, fenestrated tubes, those tubes where the length can be adjusted using an adjustable flange and the metal tubes. These are the five types of tracheostomy tubes. We also saw the parts of a tracheostomy tube. Thanks for listening.